Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Oakland Grand Prix crit for you here. This is this is not my footage, unfortunately. I was fighting COVID during this moment. This is late in the season 2022. This footage is provided by my teammate, Ryan. You guys know how strong Ryan is. Look at this first corner, all stacked up. Oh my god, this course. I absolutely love this course. I won it in 2021. Could not come back and defend it in 2022 for reasons I just mentioned. Speaking of COVID, uh, Ryan had just recovered from COVID when he was in this race. So he wasn't quite at his best, but Ryan, not at his best, is still really freaking good. Let's talk about this course, though, first of all. This is the men's P12 field. This is uh, one of the big crits, I would say, on the Northern California crit calendar throughout the year. It's a rainy day, as you can tell. Strong crosswinds, and they get really weird. I didn't put the arrows on the course profile like I usually do because the the buildings, it's like downtown Oakland. The buildings make the, uh, the wind direction super weird. It kind of swirls around, but it was strong. It was a factor. On one straightaway, the back section straightaway, it would go from a left to right to a right to left. So it was all over the place, making the racing just that much harder. Plus the course. I mean, you guys saw that first corner, right? Everything gets stacked up in that first corner, especially on a day like today when the roads are wet. So you can see Ryan fighting his way up towards the front because it is incredibly important to stay close to the front of, of the race on a day like today, especially with the conditions like today, because splits, because breakaways, things like that are incredibly likely, so it's important not to get caught out. And this is exactly what I'm talking about. We're just a few kilometers into this race, and just look at the field. It's single file. I can see little gaps opening up, and uh, Ryan's a little bit caught out here. I mean, you guys saw he started right at the back of the race at the beginning, and and he's having to do, he had to do 1,000 watts. He's already up in the, the triple, the quadruple digits. And now he's, he's having to hold something close to 500. You see all these riders just getting dropped. Guys, we are, we are like 10 minutes into this race. And it is just falling apart because of the wind, because of just how difficult this course is. Under normal circumstances, this is a hard course. But he's committed some energy. Ryan's committed some energy here. But uh, his work's not done. I mean, look at the front of the field. You can see it's like a snake. Uh, the front of the field is... Is 30 seconds ahead of him, and, and right when he thinks he's made it, these two riders in front of him both just drop the wheel. So the work is not done here, and he needs to continue to commit energy here early on in the race. This is kind of painful to watch um, because he identifies this situation as being incredibly important. I mean, this, is, this takes a lot of discipline because I think a lot of people would think, hey, we're only like 13 minutes into this race. Hey, it's fine. This big group is going to be caught back. Somebody's going to chase it back, right? But uh, wrong. Like, that's not always the case. And Ryan's very aware of this. So, yeah, it's a big commitment and energy, but he has to make it across to this front group in order not to get dropped within the first, you know, 10 minutes of this race. And then when he does make it across, he wastes absolutely no time just to finish the job. He's not just going to sit on the back, wait for another split to open up that he has to close down again. He is just going to work his way right up to the front. Um, and this is when we kind of, well, this is when we first get the glimpse of the hitters in this race. Because I mentioned this is a very hard fought race in Northern California, and you can see all the teams. All the major players are right up here towards the front. Even some teammates there in purple on Team Mike Spikes. But we have San Jose. We have Project 74, which is the, um, the specialized uh, factory team, so to speak. And then, of course, um, up there in the Legion kit, we have Tyler Williams, who lives up here in uh, Northern California, and uh, he's a professional racer. So Oh, and, and, and Tay Ruin there in the pink. So we have all the major teams in Northern California and a pro also. So this is the place to be. And it's, it's no surprise that the best riders in the race have all grouped up towards the front. But, but why is that? Why is that the case? You might be thinking, doesn't it make more sense just to sit in? Well, we already talked about the benefit of being towards the front on difficult conditions because you don't have to worry about splits. You don't have to worry about breakaways as much. At least you can see these things happening in front of you. But there's more to it than that. You also can take choice lines through the technical corners, which is important under normal circumstances, but especially when the roads are wet on a day like today. And speaking of, of Tyler Williams on, on Legion of LA, there he goes off the front. He's not the type of rider who's just going to sit in, right, and hope things work out for him. He's going to be very proactive. He's going to make sure that the race falls into his favor, not by accident, but by intention. So he sees this group of, of two or three off the front. I think it's two off the front, and he's like, well... I better not let that get away. So he's just going to chase it back. And uh, Ryan recognizes the threat, jumps across also. Big commitment and energy. I don't know if you guys saw those power numbers, but we were up 
into the quadruple digits, up over a thousand watts of power. And I think that I think that Tyler did the whole thing seated. Uh, so, oh, and here he goes. He's just going to attack through those front two riders because I, he probably just figures, you know, I've I've committed this this energy. I may as well just continue powering through. They may have been slowing down. It's a good opportunity for Ryan to jump on. Let's see if it works out. No such luck. They get chased back. And actually, you can see he has his hand up. Actually, Ryan ends up flatting here. So he's going to go into the pit for a free lap. And a quick note about free laps. Here, here you can see why a free lap isn't really a privilege like most people who are new to the sport think it is. I mean, it's got the word free in it, right? You get to rest for a lap. It sounds great. And I mean, don't get me wrong. It's nice that your race isn't over because of something out of your control, like a flat tire. But look where they let him back in. This is normal. The official has the discretion on where they let you back into the race. And they don't care if you're up towards the front. You know, when you, when you got your flat, they let you in usually in the back half of the race, second half of the race. So that's exactly what happens here. You see that they let Ryan back in, but he lost all of his good position, not to mention that first big effort getting back up to speed is always really brutal. It's tough on, on cold legs when you've been sitting there dealing with a flat tire. So all of this means Ryan has all this work cut out for him. All that, all that hard work he did in order to get to the front, now he has to replicate, do it again in order to get up towards the business end of the race. Okay, so Ryan's still working his way up towards the front. And I don't know if you guys heard that. There was a, there's a bell. So this is a preem lap. In other words, this is a prize lap. Winner of the next lap isn't the winner of the entire race, but there's like a, it's like a race within the race. There's prize money, usually some cash, some, uh, some merchandise, stuff, stuff like that that's up for grabs for the next lap. That's important. The other thing I want you guys to pay attention to is what that field looks like. It is single file, all these little gaps. We are now a half an hour into really hard fought racing on a technical course with the crosswinds and everything we talked about. It is looking like prime time for a breakaway. And usually a, a preem lap, a prize lap, is a, a an opportunistic moment in order to make that possible. Look at all these little gaps opening up. I mean, this field just looks absolutely destroyed. So Ryan's made his way up to the front, 186, 187 beats per minute. Done a lot of work in order to make that possible. But he's found a teammate up here, and Ryan's like, let's just send it for the preem lap. And, and I want you to like to think about, too, if you have a teammate up towards the front, like we saw the rider in purple, teammate on Mike's bikes, he's not going to chase. The rider in front of the Mike's bikes rider is tired from being on the front. This is a great opportunity just to make something happen. It was, it was pretty far out, but you see Ryan's keeping it in his pants. This is a hard effort, but he's going um, to guarantee himself this, this uh, prize lap. There he goes, ka-ching for the, the preem. But now he's just going to stay on the gas through this technical section. And this is exactly how I broke away in 2021. Let's see if it works out for Ryan. So it looks like we have the right composition for a breakaway here. Here's Tyler Williams from Legion. Uh, this is Miles from Project 74. And then this is Quinn, uh, now I think racing. This is a pro team in Europe. So we have a really strong composition of riders off the front. When I first saw this, I thought this was the breakaway of the day. But it's usually not that easy. It takes a few efforts. And here goes Roman with a spicy counterattack. Let me tell you guys, that feeling when you've been off the front, you're a little tired, and the first thing you see when you get brought back is a teammate immediately counterattacking, pretty special. Because, well, a couple of reasons. I mean, for one, you can now sit back in the field, in the draft, you can rest, recover, and you can force the competition to do some more chasing. This is just good teamwork, and this is the pattern you want to see. Okay, so we're a couple of kilometers later. Roman's still off the front, extending his gap. Uh, he's out of sight now. You can't even see him. He's up the road. Tyler notices this, and you can see him attacking on the right. And this is an excellent demonstration of the power of teamwork, because Ryan notices that the competition is now forced to chase back his teammate on Mike's bikes. So Ryan is not going to lose this opportunity. Ryan is going to sit in the draft here, not contribute to the pacemaking. Look, look, bike racing strategy is that simple. In a nutshell, it is maximizing the amount of time that your competition is unsheltered, pushing through the wind, wasting energy, and maximizing the amount of time that you and your teammates can spend in the draft, sheltered, being efficient, saving your energy, and by the time they catch Roman here on the left, who's now enjoying a gel, <laughs> we are passing through the start finish one more time. And there is that bell again, indicating another preem lap, another prize lap on offer. And I have a feeling with this composition of riders, look, it's, it's, it's essentially the same riders as before. 
We're, we're deep into the race now. Everyone's been looking tired for the last 10 minutes. I have a feeling this is going to be the opportunity for a breakaway. And sure enough, once Miles from Project 74 jumps across, that seals the deal. The Peloton is no longer able to chase. And we've established this group of four, the final selection of the day. But it's not long before Tyler strikes out solo. And here you can see with about six kilometers to go, he launches from the left-hand side of the road. And let's talk about this timing because this is a thing of beauty. So first of all, he chooses to attack from the back of this group. And, and he does this in order to maximize that slingshot effect. We've talked about so much on this channel. The slingshot effect is that that speed differential, which is so incredibly important when you're establishing a breakaway. It, he carries his speed past the front riders. This makes it so much harder to follow in his draft. But also, uh, and, and I'm not even sure he realized this, but the keen-eyed among you would have noticed that the front rider was reaching for a gel at the time Tyler made that attack, which makes it even harder for him to respond. So really classy stuff here. The other three riders in this breakaway recognize the threat of Tyler breaking away with six kilometers to go, almost immediately start chasing, and they fall into really good rotation. They're taking hard pulls, they're doing it very efficiently as a group, they're sheltering each other in the wind, they're doing everything that they're supposed to be doing in order to chase back Tyler, but it's Tyler. Tyler is a human motorcycle, so he is just up there smashing some ungodly number of watts, probably 450 watts, 500 watts of power, something like that, based on the, the amount of power that this chase group is doing, and he is still just eking away second by second. Tells me he is making all sorts of power. And that brings us into just over a lap to go. We're about to pass through the bell lap, and Tyler has now opened his gap up to something like, I want to say, 9 or 10 seconds, despite their best efforts. As you can see, they were rotating nicely. They were sharing the work. They were all committed to bringing back Tyler. But look, let's just, let's just be realistic. He was on one of those days. Tyler is that way sometimes. He's a, an absolute machine. So um, I don't think there's, there's any bringing back Tyler at this point in the race. And if I were in Ryan's position, I would start thinking about the second spot on the podium. How can you secure a second? So, so the first thing you have to do is start thinking about your, your competition. So I know that Miles is, has a very powerful sprint. He's a rider in, in the black and red kit. He was on Mike's Bikes uh, a couple years ago. We were teammates. I know what he's capable of. He likes to go for the long sprints especially. Quinn, on the other hand, a, a very, very talented climber. I don't know if he's known especially for his sprint. So I would be keeping a close eye on, on Miles. And in this situation, when you're unfortunately forced to the front of the race where Ryan is, I would be looking back. I wouldn't even be looking forward. I would be making sure I'm staying on the road, but I would just be looking at my competition, making sure I'm not going to get jumped too hard here towards the end, which is exactly what happens. And this is kind of the predictable attack by Miles because, like I said, he's that front rider in the red and the black, and this is his move from this distance. And look, we're going down a little bit of hit. We're going down this little hill into the finish line, and there's just not a whole lot of time to, to make a pass here in the final couple of hundred meters of this race. And it looks like all those early efforts from Ryan are finally starting to catch up with them. Miles definitely had a lot still left in the tank. He's able to pass Quinn here with a couple hundred meters to go, but just doesn't quite have the legs left to catch and pass Miles. But the good news is he gets third. So congratulations, Ryan, for third. I know that my teammate Ryan is probably disappointed with this result. But hey, look, dude, you're recovering from COVID. Fantastic result. Uh, two very classy riders in front of you on the podium uh, being Tyler Williams. Congratulations on the win. Miles, second place. And uh, absolutely love this race. Thanks for sharing your footage, Ryan. Don't forget, guys, there is a link in the description. Quick five-minute uploader if you want to submit your footage. I can, uh, I can break it down. This is super fun. We're getting ready for 2023, boys. As always, appreciate you hanging out, and we'll catch you in the next one.